The Labrador has come a long, long way since its inception as a breed, as the St. John's water dog, who retrieved nets and fish that had slipped the hook for European fishermen who were plundering the icy waters off the Atlantic, just off Canada. They are now perhaps the most diversely and extensively employable dogs in the world for little reason more than their original breeding, way back when they didn't even go by the name Labrador. Now, when European settlers decided to explore the fertile but freezing ocean off of Newfoundland, Canada, many centuries ago, they brought their own dogs who were useful retrievers and decent swimmers, but not equipped for long working days in water of that temperature. Dogs being dogs, however, they found their own solution by co-mingling with the native dogs of Canada and with each other, self-refining for years before the guiding hand of the fishermen began to selectively breed the perfect water dog. They wanted a hardy, loyal assistant on the water who could be trusted to work hard and not spoil the merchandise while surviving the water's persistent and icy temperatures. The result eventually was the St. John's Water Dog, who closely resembles a modern black Labrador, except for a white tuxedo marking on its chest. The dog had been bred for a job and everything about it served that purpose, both body and mind. Its dense water resistant double coat made it totally durable to the brutally cold temperatures of the water. Its extensively webbed toes propelled it through the water like a torpedo. Behaviorally, it was also hard of body meaning it could tolerate pain well, but soft of mouth, meaning it didn't damage the fish it caught. A trait that would be exploited later by hunters. And temperamentally, these dogs were highly collaborative, working closely with their human counterparts in the boats to get the job done. So exceptional were these working dogs that when their waterborne exploits were witnessed by English people, when many of the fisher folk returned to English soil in the the 19th century, there were demands by noblemen breeders to import the best specimens so they could be repurposed into gun dogs to accompany men on the hunt, with some crosses that likely involved setters and spaniels who were already accomplished hunting dogs, as well as selective breeding of desirable traits in the St. John's water dog. The Labrador is what emerged. This iteration of the breed had been equipped with enhanced human and canine sociability. So labs were suited to large hunting parties. They also now were more sensitive to movement and more resilient to sound, meaning that they wouldn't flee from a gunshot, but would instead pinpoint the falling bird with their skilled eyes before performing a soft retrieve as their recent ancestors once had done for fish. As time passed and more countries started to take on this excellent worker, our developing retriever gained worldwide fame in in the role and despite now being the most popular family pet in the world is still used as a hunter in several countries including the UK. Its purpose has barely altered in this respect meaning breeding has been quite consistent since the breed's official recognition by the Kennel Club of the UK in 1903. In the US in contrast the water loving Labrador is put to arguably even better and more natural use in hunting retrieving shot waterfowl from water rather than hard terrain. Harking back some somewhat to its historical origins in those Canadian waters. But the Labrador isn't just a hunting dog. Indeed, in the last century, its senses and sensibilities have been refined by breeders to make it an excellent service dog to disabled, with labs functioning as guide and assistant dogs, as well as excellent therapy dogs. Combining this tendency for close and loving canine human collaboration with the superb working drive and remarkable skill set of the Labrador, they have in recent years also being bred for targeted nose work in bomb and arson detection, drug sniffing, medical detection work and search and rescue amongst tons of other roles. Indeed, the one thing a Labrador has never been bred for and would struggle with is guarding and protection work. In contrast with the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, who would be called a replica of the lab if it weren't for its breeding history as a protector as well as a retriever, that and its curly coat of course.